All right, today we're talking about artist video and photo. What's going on everybody? If you're new to this channel, my name is Jordan Palmano and I'm a cinematographer and photographer based in Central California. Now I do a lot of work in the electronic music industry. I tour with artists and shoot music festivals. And for the past few years of doing this, the number one question I get is, how did you get into this? I wanna do this too, how can I do it? And I've tried to make this video like three separate times in the past year. I figured I would start it out with a quick tip on stuff I do for live event photography. This video is gonna be geared towards the artist and live event style. And I don't know why I never finished them or put them out, but it's just been one of those videos in the back of my head for the past year. It's like, you need to put this out. This video is gonna be a little mix of a vlog and me talking here in the office. Uh, last weekend, I went on the road with Kashmir. We went to Las Vegas, we went to Chicago and did two shows there. So it was just like a quick run. So let's get into that vlog and then we'll cut back to here in a little bit. I am headed out on the road just for two days for the weekend with Kashmir. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Chicago, two club shows. So I figured perfect time to just shoot something because it's a short trip. I'm packed up right now. I'm gonna go to the airport. And um, I swear the office was clean literally like a couple hours ago. Office was spotless and then I had to pack. And for some reason, anytime I pack, it just goes to shit. It is 9.50, so I've got 10 minutes to get into the airport, go through security and get to my gate. But I have a hunch that I might have a little fog delay. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, but I think it might be good. I made it through security in three minutes. That's any indication of how small this airport is. To Vegas just got into my room staying at the Cosmo Cashmere plays at Marquee tonight not much of a view they put me on the low floor what still Vegas all right I just got to my room finally here it's kind of annoying having to fly Fresno to San Francisco because you're like backtracking an hour just to fly back to Vegas there's a direct flight from Fresno but didn't take that. I am going to go get food because I'm starving. I was thinking about room service, but I am next to the number one best food spot, best burger spot in my heart. And I'm gonna go there for lunch. And that is Bobby's Burger Palace. <music> So before I get into all the tips and tricks of everything, I want to tell you how I got into it because like I said, there's no one way to get into this industry. There's so many different ways. I want to tell you my story, how I got into it. So maybe you can kind of see those similarities if maybe you're in the same position. Um, let's go all the way back to 2015. I'll try and keep this somewhat short. So we're gonna bring it back to 2015 when I moved to Los Angeles. I originally moved there because I was trying to grow my career as a cinematographer and a director. So that's what I started working on when I got down there. At the same time, I started getting really into electronic music. Fast forward to the summer of 2015, I got hired to shoot on a uh, live stream team for EDC Las Vegas. I was really excited to do this because at that point, I was trying to get into this somehow. So I went there, I shot for the weekend, and um, I got to shoot a lot of stuff like in the artist compound where all the artists go, just like little slow motion clips to cut into like a final thank you video for the weekend. From spending the weekend there, I started meeting a lot of different uh, managers and um, different photographers and videographers. And I was like, I wanna do this. I wanna do this somehow. I don't know how, but I wanna find a way to get into this because this looks so awesome. So once I got back to LA, I kept doing my thing, shooting music videos, kind of going down the career path that I wanted to do there. But now there's this new thing that I wanted to do and I wanted to figure out how to do it. A few months into living in LA, I had uh, met a production company and I helped them do just like data wrangling. So I kind of kept in touch with them throughout the next few months and uh, fast forward to almost the end of the year of 2015, 
they had a, a full-time position opening up as a shooter editor at their office. And I was like, I gotta get in on this. It ended up working out and they hired me full-time. Their background at the time was shooting music festivals. That's where I started learning not only how to shoot music festivals on like a production side, but also how to shoot it on the, on the artist side. And I wanted to get into the artist side more and more. I just kept, you know, meeting managers, introducing myself to those different photographers and videographers meeting artists and a couple years of doing that, uh, I started getting hired for like little one-offs with artists, mainly through the company I was working for. So I just kept doing my thing and then the fall of 2017, same company put me on a tour with Odessa. I did their tour and then I was supposed to go straight on for a full month with another artist. I had that whole month blocked out. They canceled last minute. Crap, that was kind of my moment right there. So after the Odessa tour, kind of bummed because it was like, man, I was so close. And right in that moment, I got a call that this artist was looking for a full-time video and photo guy. Now, at the time, I only did video. I, I knew photo, but as far as live event photo, I had no experience with. They put me on the road a couple weekends throughout that fall of 2017. And, you know, I learned the ropes as I went. They were happy with the videos we were putting out. Right there at the end of the year, they said, hey, we want to bring you on these dates. And they sent me a whole Google spreadsheet basically blocking out the entire year of 2018. So it finally happened like three years later. It took me three years to get to that point. And since then, um, I, you know, I traveled with them for like a year and a half and I started working with other artists. And uh, now I just kind of go from artist to artist and kind of just builds from there. Showtime. everybody Saturday morning day after the show everything was awesome last night um, super tired I didn't go to bed until 4 woke up at around 9 just so I had a couple hours to get some stuff done before we head to Chicago uh, I'll show you around the room which is a mess I try my best to keep everything as organized as I can but it just kind of like things just get messy so all my shits everywhere working on some photos right now backing up everything making sure that's good to go and uh yeah i'm gonna shower up here in a second get dressed and then we gotta head to the airport and fly four hours to chicago there's the pack job not the prettiest but as long as you fit everything in there you're chilling all right just make sure that i grabbed everything do a little quick look all right everything's packed up Grabbing my bag, going downstairs, and headed to the airport. <sighs> All right. Well, today was kind of a bust for filming, um, which kind of figured this is like the reality of being on the road is you don't always have these action-packed days. All right, so I know it may be surprising because of my great track record for finishing vlogs, but I didn't really film anything worth including in the rest of the vlog portion of this video. Um, I wasn't gonna put in another music montage, you already saw that. That was, you know, we did the show and then I headed home. There are a couple clips that I shot of me heading home. But if you're watching this, you're probably not even watching it for the vlog. You don't even give a crap about that. You just wanna know how I got into this industry and what to do to get into it. So I told you my story, now I'm gonna give you some advice and some things that I think you should do that might be helpful to get into it. So if you're watching this, you're probably wanting to get into this in some shape or form and you don't know where to start. I just wanna disclaim right now that the advice and tips that I gave you are probably gonna be pretty similar to anyone else's advice in this industry. There's really no formula to it, but these are the obvious things that you have to do, which you're probably gonna think, oh, well, duh, I already knew that, thanks, dude. Well, let's get into the very beginning, which is a portfolio. The base of all of your work, whether it's in the music industry or whether it's in any other part of a creative industry, you have to have work to show for. You need that portfolio, and how do you get a portfolio without having done the work? 
that's the hardest thing. It's like you graduate from college and you need to get a job, but they want three years of experience, but how do you get that experience? So you need to get that portfolio going. Now, I always tell people the best way to start is start as small as you possibly can. So hit up your local clubs, hit up your local venues, and just try to get in there. Try to get in there to shoot for free. Just shoot as much as you can there because there's gonna be a lot of artists coming through depending on where you live. Um, start as small as possible there. Don't try and get in with these big arena acts or like some really high level artists right away. The next thing that I tell people is to find an artist that's coming into your town. So do some research on artists that are coming into town, what concerts are going on around in your area. Find the artist, research who their management is and message them, send them an email. It's really easy to find an artist's manager. It's on their website, it's on their Facebook page. Again, start small, hit up the small artists because likely they're not gonna have anybody with them. Start as small as you can with that and you're probably gonna have a little more luck and tr just try to do that as much as you can. Start shooting as many different artists and as many different things as you can to keep building that portfolio. So you're gonna wanna just keep doing that wash, rinse, repeat cycle for however long it takes until you feel comfortable that you have a nice body of work. Start scaling it up. Look for music festivals in your area. Go through the lineup, hit up some of the smaller artists or some other artists that you wanna shoot and just offer something that would be enticing and give them a reason to bring you on. Um, Cause again, smaller artists probably aren't gonna have someone with them already. It's a little more tough to get into music festivals. When you do get in there, be aware of the surroundings and uh, the access that you're given because the last thing you wanna do is just go there overstep your access and you look like a chump and you never get hired again, or you step on people's toes, stuff like that. So when you're first getting into the music festival world, you wanna be very respectful of the access that you're granted. Never, um, just don't look like a douchebag, pretty much. So next up is networking. Now networking is another obvious in the creative world. You have to network to get to know people. We're in a time in social media where it's very easy to hit up other videographers and photographers that you know you look up to and you know chat it up with them kind of get to know them, maybe see if they're willing to give you some advice on how to get into what they do and you know let them know that that's what you want to do so you got a network like this i did this for years and living in la i will say was a little easier because i was always thrown into these situations where i was able to meet face to face and you can see that person right there and really get to gauge them as a person and their intentions and at the end of the day you need to be a human and it's really easy to tell when someone is messaging you because they're just trying to get something out of you or they're messaging you because they're genuinely a fan of your work. They genuinely want to know and learn kind of what you do, but, but not in a way that is just malicious. It's still on a human level and it's really easy to gauge that in people. So really think about that when you're hitting these people up, when, when you're doing anything trying to get into the music industry is be a human at the end of the day. Now these two steps are really all it is. There's no such thing as a formula of getting into this. You can get into it in so many different ways, but having a strong portfolio and having a strong network of people you know is going to be the two things that are kind of a given with getting into the music industry. You just have to get out there and it's gonna be a really long um, snowball of like slowly, slowly building up traction. It could take years, it could take three years, seven years, it could take two months, who knows. Um, but you just have to keep that going because that snowball is eventually gonna grow and it's gonna grow and grow and eventually you're gonna find yourself like, oh shoot, I'm on tour with this artist. Again, it took me a really long time and there were a lot of moments and a lot of times with that just like were complete failures where I thought there's no chance I'm gonna do this. How could someone like me get on tour with an artist when there's all of these people who are way more talented, they're way more connected, but I just kept going because I knew I wanted to do this. So that's pretty much it. I hope that this advice kind of at least gives you an idea of where to start. I know it's overwhelming. I know there's a lot of stuff and you wanna just like get started right now, but go step by step. Take the time, enjoy that process because you're gonna get very resentful when things aren't working out for you and you see these people online doing what you wanna do and it's not working out for you. Stay away from that. Just keep doing what you're doing. Worry about your own path because it's gonna be different than everyone else. And once it finally takes off and you're not really gonna know, like there's not gonna be that one big aha moment where you're like, oh shoot, it's finally happening for me. You're gonna look back two years down the road of doing it and realize like, oh shoot, like this is where I'm at now. This is where I was two years ago. And that's a, a much better feeling, I think than just having like this crazy lottery winning moment. That's all I have for this video. If you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if it helped you at all, and hit me up in the comments. Let me know what kind of videos you wanna see in this next year. 
But until then, uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Later.